Hi everyone, welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to be talking about a subject that's going to make a lot of us a little upset, but the fact is fall and winter is on the way, summer is coming to an end very soon, and that makes me very sad. <laughs> So what I'm going to talk about today is how to prepare for fall and winter with depression. So if you're like me and a lot of people who do suffer from depression, you find it gets a lot worse in the winter. And of course there's a lot of people who just get depression in the fall and winter and it's called seasonal affective disorder. So this is caused by numerous things. One being that the cold weather keeps us indoors a lot, so we're not outside experiencing fresh air so much, we're not socializing as much, which I know right now with the pandemic in general we're not socializing, which is why there's been a spike in cases of depression and anxiety even now with it being summertime. That's a whole other video. <laughs> So being kept inside, being antisocial, the lack of sunlight as the days get shorter, it's really depressing when it's just dark outside all the time, plus with the darkness you are not getting as much vitamin D from the sun, which really helps improve your mood. What I've decided to do is ahead of time when it's almost fall is to start to prepare myself for the winter because I know this is going to happen every year. I know my depression gets worse and I like to try and get ahead of it if possible. So as I just mentioned, the lack of sunlight means lack of vitamin D. The sunlight actually helps your body to create the vitamin D inside yourself. It doesn't actually like send vitamin D onto you. Um, so what I do is I take D drops, the vitamin D drops, you can get any brand you want. I personally use D drops and I start taking that on a regular basis. It actually is a really good vitamin in general just to take even during the summertime, but I really, really make sure I'm on top of it when winter is on its way. The next tip is to start planning your indoor exercising. So there are gonna be plenty of days where you have your plan to go to the gym and work out, but there's a blizzard or you just really don't feel like going outside and I feel you. I get that. So if you already have a plan in place for the days that you don't go to the gym, what you're going to do when you're home, then that'll make it easier because if you're suddenly like, oh, I I'm not going to the gym today, I guess I'll just watch TV, you're not going to get your exercise in. And exercise is extremely important for your mental health and your overall health. The next tip is plan to go outside and try to stick to that plan. Not when it's a blizzard, but when it's a really nice day outside, try and get yourself outside as much as you can. Yeah, it's gonna be cold. I wrote a blog post about this a couple years ago, I think, and at the time I was living in an apartment building and I mentioned how I have a dog, which forces me to go outside all the time. Sometimes that was the worst because there was horrible weather and I'd still have to go outside. But I did find on the nicer days, I would go out longer, I'd actually go for a little bit of a walk with her. I just find in general after being outside for a little bit, even if it is cold but the sun is shining and it's nice, I do feel a bit better once I come back in. So when it's one of the nicer days in the fall and winter, try and go for a walk to the corner store, go for a walk around the block. If you have a dog, take your dog for a walk. Next tip is to make an appointment with your doctor or your therapist or whoever you see to talk about your mental health. So I know a lot of doctors are all about preventative care and I think that is really important even with depression and other mental illnesses. So I would make an appointment with my doctor to talk if I had a lot of concerns about whether this winter is going to be easy or not for me. Together me and her can come up with a plan of coping strategies for myself, what I'm going to do if I find myself in a dark place, if I need to increase or decrease a medication I might be on or start a medication. It's just a lot better to talk to your doctor, especially if you've been seeing them for your mental health before. Let them know you're concerned about the winter coming up. It's a lot better than going to them halfway through winter when you're in a really dark place. So if they can help you avoid the dark place and help you come up with some good strategies and treatment options beforehand, it will make your winter a lot easier. And that is a great segue into my next point, which is to brush up on your coping strategies. 
during the summer when you're typically not feeling as depressed, if that is how you naturally are, you won't be using your coping strategies as much. So this is a good time to sit down and think about what coping strategies you use, how they have worked for you, and what skills you need to remember to continue doing them. And to just try and get on a routine of doing them on a more regular basis. So for me, I like CBT, Cognitive Behavioral Therapy. It has been really helpful for me for both anxiety and depression. I've only done it like officially in a group setting with a professional for anxiety, but I've used the skills and transferred them to helping with my depression as well. So I don't do my thought records too often anymore. I do them in my head when need be, but this is a good time for me to actually sit down and think about the way CBT works, think about what my negative thoughts typically are in the winter, and think about it's hard to explain if you don't know what CBT is and how it works, but I'm basically going to go through and try and get myself in a habit of really focusing on my thinking. I might actually do a video on CBT and how it works if you guys are interested, so let me know in the comments below, and I can definitely do that because I think CBT is really helpful. That being said, I am not a professional in any way, so I'll put that disclaimer in the video if I make it, but yeah. The next point is to ask for help. If you have someone in your life who is trusted, you're familiar with and you're comfortable with, talk to them, even ahead of time. Say, I'm really worried about winter, I might need to lean on you for a bit of support, and ask them for help if you need it. If they're really a loved one who cares about you, they will definitely want to help you. So this next tip is for people who really enjoy the holidays and holiday time through the winter. So that is to decorate. I mean, I cannot be that sad when my room is just full of sparkly lights <laughs> and Christmas decorations and stuff that remind me of celebrating Christmas when I was a little girl. And I'm really excited this year with Cassidy being almost a year and a half. She'll be a lot more aware of what's going on, so that's going to be exciting side tangent, but I find that if you are decorating and you surround yourself with an atmosphere and an environment that is more cheerful, it will help lift your mood a little bit. It's not a cure. Def none of these are cures, but it's definitely something that will help if it is something that you really enjoy. If the holidays bring a lot of hurtful emotions towards you, um, I know some people had really difficult childhoods and holidays are a source of pain. Obviously don't do this and I'm really sorry about that. I do understand that this won't be a tip that everyone can really participate in or want to do. The next one is to get creative. With the cold weather keeping us indoors, we can end up binging Netflix and just watch shows and shows and shows and then get boring after a while. You may run out of content you want to watch, or you may just not want to watch TV anymore. So this is a time to get creative. It's something that can keep your brain busy without just sitting around watching TV, which doesn't really activate your brain that much. Now I know I'm a big advocate for doing creative things. I do crafts on this channel and I really love doing them. And that's because I do find being creative to be really therapeutic. In any of my craft videos that you've seen, when you've watched my time lapses where I speed up myself doing some sort of task, during that time my brain is just kind of working out stuff and thinking about things, but also thinking about what I'm doing. And I find it a good way to sort of help me process things that have gone on during the day. And also when you're done making something, when you're being creative, and you have a finished created product, you're going to feel this sense of accomplishment, which you won't get from watching movies on Netflix. And a sense of accomplishment being a very positive emotion will be great to combat the negative emotions that you're having. And this is partly why I do also have my Etsy shop. I love creating. I just, I love making things. I love creating. And that is one other area where I can create on a regular basis. It's very therapeutic for my mental health and also can help me earn an income on the side when I start making sales. 
and stock up on supplies and just get crafting all winter and at the end of it you'll have a bunch of stuff that you've made that you really love and yeah I'm gonna stop preaching creative stuff now <laughs> but I really and truly believe being creative is a great outlet for your just your brain your imagination everything it's just a wonderful thing to do and I even love watching people being creative on YouTube like have you checked out these paint pouring videos <laughs> I love it. I've actually been thinking about doing a drawing video where I just have the camera on my paper and I'll do like a coloring book page and then just speed it up. But I don't know if that would be really interesting, but I think it would be to watch. Anyway, side tangent done. Those are my tips for surviving the fall and winter with depression. I would love to hear your tips and your suggestions. It's going to be a rough one, especially now with the pandemic going on. We've already been cooped up inside for a lot of the summer, which is really getting under a lot of people's skin. And then the winter is going to come, and I don't know what the holidays are going to look like this year, but I hope that you have a good holiday season if you're able to celebrate and get together with friends and family. I really have no idea what we're doing yet. <laughs> But yeah, I'm just hoping we can all get through the winter and make it to the other side with as much ease as possible. It's going to be rough, but we can do it. So that was my video, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I hope I gave you some great tips that will help you. I will see you guys next week in the next video. Bye. Alright, let's get started. Hmm, I get it, Sequin. I feel ya. I wish I could easily turn the camera around to show you how cute she's being. The fun of filming in your bedroom. Ugh, I just got a text while I was in the middle of talking and I really liked that take. Get depressed. Blah. People find their depression. Ah, I cannot say the word depression today and it's the main topic of the video, so that's fun. I have to stop saying so.